All right, folks, welcome to today's lesson. Today, I am going through Franz Liszt's Un Suspiro. So this is a great, uh, I guess, first piece for Franz Liszt. Most of Liszt's pieces are just really hard. This one's tricky, but, uh, you know, I would give this to a kind of early advanced student. Uh, you know, I give this to lots of my high school students. So... Uh, just some very beautiful stuff in here, uh, some tricky things, so uh, let's hop right to it. So, the opening here, you have this arpeggio, and this happens a lot, so you, you've got to get figure this out. Um, this spread here can be tricky for students, because you can't hit it in one hand position. So, spreading that, spreading that... Just make sure you orient your hand to the note you need at the time you need it, right? So here. And then you've got to traverse those notes as you're playing it. So this kind of side swipe of your hand. And throughout, I would recommend practice without pedal. So that can be kind of hard because the habit is to always play the pedal. But stick your foot underneath the pedal as you do these so you won't be tempted. Because you want it clean without pedal before you add pedal in. Otherwise, you're just kind of hiding uh, technical deficiencies, right? So once that's working, we can talk kind of about the musical aspects. So. This piece is called Un Suspiro, so a sigh. This is definitely like a, an Italian art song. It's very operatic. So this beginning here lays the introduction for the vocalist, right? Take a big breath. And then the vocalist comes in. Da, 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 da. So what I have in mind is like, uh, you know, an old Italian tenor, like uh, Caruso or something. Uh, you really need to be in tune with how, what is the pacing? Where might the vocalist breathe? Where are they going to push to in the line? So I see this as like a, a tenor kind of line. If you took this down an octave, it fits the tenor range. The tenor range very nicely. Like F is not too high for a tenor. Eventually we're going to get to like A flat and B flat which is kind of climactic points uh, in the line. So that's what I have in mind. So go listen to some old uh, Italian tenors, and you'll kind of get a feel for what this is. And then sing it. I don't care how bad your voice is. You need to empathize with how a vocalist would approach to this kind of stuff. Uh, where are they going to breathe? You know, how, how slow can you go? How fast can you go? Those kinds of things. All right, so... Right, there's a nice opening for a breath there. Um, so you kind of have to give this illusion on the piano. You can't play a note, right, and make it grow. Right? As soon as you hit a note, it just starts to decay. So you have to give the illusion that it's growing by growing the line. And some little bit of pedal, maybe. You can kind of mush the notes a little bit with the pedal, kind of give it that effect. The other thing you can do is grow, support the note underneath, or the, 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 the melody note with the notes underneath. All this movement can kind of give the illusion that it's growing like an, maybe like an orchestra supporting. You know, vi violins can grow as they're playing too. And you can do less pedal or more pedal. Right, more pedal might add more volume, so you can experiment with that. So we need to give the illusion that the piano is not a percussive instrument, right? That it's maybe it's a singing instrument. Okay, so uh, I would, I would sing. You could just leave the right hand out and sing as I did there. So that's a very good exercise. Be able to sing that melody as you play the accompaniment. You could just block the chords out, and we'll do this a lot 
uh, in the next section when the harmony gets a little more complex, but you can just go. Right? Really nice. No, just two chords here. It's really simple. One, four, one over a D flat pedal. All right, D flat stays the same. It's like a church hymn, right? Something like that, right? Okay, so we got that twice, right? That happens twice. And then we got this section. Yeah, so right off the bat, that's the highest note yet for this uh, supposed tenor, right? So it's a very uh, uh, kind of like climactic note, I think. It's the... Well, two things. It's it's high and it's the flat nine of this F dominant, right? Right? Yeah, we have accented dissonances on 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 the beat, right? So, well, here's the off beat. Here's right four three of the chord, right? Same thing there. Accent and dissonance. So dissonance. It's not a member of the chord. Right goes to the third of the chord. That's a member of the chord. This is not. And then this. Same thing here. Got your two chord. And then. Oh, now not an accent distance. So it's kind of like a release. And it's down here in a more comfortable range. That kind of thing. All right? So really pay attention to uh, range, right? Where is it in, in the voice? High, low. Also, is this an... Act. Is this a dissonant note against the chord? Yo, right out, right out the gate, right? It's a dissonant note. It's a dissonant note on the chord, uh, so it kind of comes in and out. You have tension release, tension release, even within the same chord. Uh, if you step back a little bit, the chord itself is kind of surprising, right? We went D flat, F dominant, right? To get to here, six. Right? Six chord, two chord, one in second inversion, right? One, six, four, five, one. Yeah, so again, like before, I would practice it blocked out. Okay, just blocked and singing the melody. Uh, let's see. Oh, there's a cool thing here he does. Right there, it's a voice exchange. So C, A, and then the A and the C are going to switch places. Yeah, so you see this a lot in, I don't know, Mozart, Beethoven. It's just kind of like a common voice leading technique, voice exchange. Okay, so uh, we'll go on to the next section. So again, once we get done with that. And some editions I actually see a fermata on that second F. Right, if, if it was an Italian opera, you know, uh, tenor they they you know they're gonna let that note shine it's high again that's kind of the money note that's what the you know the audience is paying money to see <laughs> right that's that's pretty standard of that style okay keep going keep going so here it's, we got the same thing as the, the beginning just now it's in octaves 
So this isn't, this kind of freaks students out at the beginning, but it's, I don't think it's as hard as they make it seem. List is a nice thing, it's all in black keys. It's way easier to do these on black keys than white keys. You'll, you'll find out that when you get to this F. F is a little harder on these white keys. You, you can kind of flub them, right? So, just get comfortable going like that, okay? Just skipping, I just do three and two, but I guess you could do, you could do the same finger. I always just do three, two. Just move the hand up. I would not try to do five, one and cover it because it's like it's way over, what's way over on the keyboard across your body. That's gonna be really hard. Yeah, it's gonna be impossible. Uh, so you have choices here. So you'll hear people emphasize either the bottom note. So like the top notes, the echo. Yeah, the bottom notes emphasize, or you can do the top notes. It's you can do that, like the top note. I don't see an addition where where list specifies one way or the other. Uh, so I've heard people do both, or you could kind of make them equal. I don't, I don't like that maybe quite as much. I kind of like the echo effect. I kind of prefer the bottom note, but you could mix it up maybe one time, play it, bottom note, top note. Uh, I don't know. You can, you can choose or listen to what you like. Find, uh, you could find some recordings of people playing this and see what they do, but you'll hear that pretty, pretty common. Okay, then the next section. Uh, so, all right, we just finished. Don't forget this extra D flat there. Go to minor, and then we. That's surprising, right? So this is very similar. I would make sure I could just block it. Block it and be able to call out the chords. And I know some people think, oh, I don't need to know theory, and but but it doesn't hurt, right? It doesn't hurt to know the theory here. Uh, and any extra way you have of learning the piece is only going to help you. Uh, and I will say after judging lots of, uh, you know, high school piano competitions, it's the harmonically complex spots that people have memory troubles, right? And if you really knew those spots in and out, the theory, how it fit together, you know, there's some, some memory mistakes you just aren't going to make. So... I would put in the effort, and you put in the effort, how badly do you want to play it well, stable, memorized, that kind of thing. Put in the work, and, and it won't be hard anymore. All right, so E dominant, right? And a non-chord tone. Da -da. So again, it's kind of a surprising chord here, and also a dissonant note right out of the gate. A, right? E dominant makes sense. E is the five of A major, right? So one thing, you'll see this already. One thing List is starting to do, he likes these third relationships, right? D flat to A. We call that chromatic mediant relationship. Mediant meaning uh, third. Okay, so D flat, he went to A, right? Via the, the dominant chord. Augmented, right? A augmented. Back to E dominant. Yeah, so I would make sure you can reduce this. Again, like before, play just the blocks. And 
And surprisingly, even just that, it's it's hard for students to kind of condense down out of all the busy notes, what are the core elements that make all of that work? And once you got that, then you could just play, just play without the melody. Right? And you could sing it. Uh, Okay. Again, you really want to emphasize with that vocalist how they're pacing, where they're going to push, where they're going to run out of breath. So I, I would breathe. I can't remember where I breathed there, but I probably breathed at the end of this. Breath there. Maybe another breath. Right, and there's a fermata on the F. Think, okay, hold it about as long as you possibly can for the vocalist, right? I need to have a little air left over because you don't want to go, da, 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 da. it's going to be all the way. Da, 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 da. Right, think about line, how much breath you're going to need to get out of that. Um, and and be tasteful. So it's giving the illusion that a vocalist is singing, although it's you know the, the piano can't grow, it can't respond the same way as the voice. But you've got to give that illusion that you actually are. And this is kind of masterfully done. Uh, List is the master of uh, like transcribing from other instruments. You know he did all the uh, orchestra transcriptions, like the Beethoven symphonies. So he's kind of the master of taking things that were meant for other instruments and playing them on the piano and making them sound really good. All right, so once we're out of that... Right, same thing. I would understand that harmony. It's a little different, right? A, one, four, one, right? Da, da, da. Oh, and he puts a surprise in here. Da, 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 da. Yeah, really surprising kind of dissonant chord, right? You know, it's just kind of more of the same. All right, let's go to the next section. I will go up to... All this uh, crazy business here. I'll go up to that. Okay, so uh, da, 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 da. A major, right? We're actually fully in A major now. And then we're gonna go up here. The ah, sorry, folks. Same thing. Yeah, really tense, right? We're going all the way up to the E flat. Yeah, so know your harmony. Do the exact same thing. The trick here is this, this rhythm. So it's very, again, it's very vocal. It's very kind of speech-like. So I wouldn't be too pedantic like, oh, we got, we got these sextuples here, six notes, have to line up exactly, you know, like mathematically. It's, it's, right? How is it? There's probably some like Italian words that could go with it, but it's very, very kind of spoken. Yeah. Yeah, and you get the idea. So, very high and also nice low dissonant. So again, block it out. Same kind of stuff. The, the same stuff. 
uh, make sure you can block it out. This is actually a chord tone, right? But it's a dissonant chord. Yeah, that's really striking. A flat. F minor. So the A flat over the C. That's what I mean. Very dissonant. Okay, so F minor with an A flat on the bottom. That is an accident dissonance right on the beat. All right. There you go. A major, or sorry, minor with a major seventh on top. All right, two. All right, two half diminished. Because we're gonna we're heading for F major. Again, uh, chromatic median. Right, we were D flat, we went to E flat, or sorry, E, A, right? D flat, A, and we're gonna end up in F. F major. So he's kind of taking this wander walkabout through third relationship. So D flat, A, we're gonna end up in F, right? Right? To F. Okay, uh, and that's that's pretty much it. Where are we at here? C dominant on the flat nine. Yeah, very vocal still, right? Kind of like a very cadenza-like, very open. Right, lots of space for the orchestra to wait and then come in on cue, right? Da -dum. The orchestra comes back in. Okay. Yeah, so I, that's probably good for today. Uh, we'll, we, I would, if, if you like this, if you want me to finish the piece, comment below in the video and I'll pick up from here. But there's, there's kind of like lots of Te technical tricks here with this uh, and the melody in the left hand so but we'll we'll just go there that's about uh, four pages into the piece uh, maybe maybe about a third of the piece uh, yeah if you liked it give it a thumbs up uh, subscribe to my channel and comment below if you want me to finish this anyway uh, happy practicing <laughs>